Our protagonist, Kate, works as the assistant to the editor-in-chief of Seattle City News. She's also the designated office coffee girl. Confined to being her boss's errand girl, she looks forward to being promoted to a junior intern at work and getting to write stories for their newspaper starting with the Olivia Klein story which she pitched to Patricia, her boss. The movie opens and we see Kate on her way to get coffee for the office while on the phone with her mom, Linda. Linda and her daughter, Kate are just like two peas in a pod. Together with Joe, Kate's father they are a close-knit family from the quaint town of Sunflower Valley. During the call, Kate informs her mom about the possibility of her coming home to do some research on an idea that she pitched to her boss. She's hopeful that Patricia will allow her to do more than wait after her by writing the piece about Olivia Klein, who happens to be her great-grandmother, though no one knows about this tidbit at work. At the coffee shop, where she's a regular, she stands at a corner waiting for the barista to bring her order. A tall handsome stranger, Drew enters the coffee shop and heads her way. She seems to be new in the neighborhood and at his request she helps him order the best pastries the cafe offers. As she leaves with her order firmly in her hands, she returns to the cafe for some napkins, but runs into the stranger Drew. Her ice-cold latte splatters on his white shirt and ruins it beyond repair. Drew tries not to show how uncomfortable he is with the cold that seeps into his shirt. Kate is remorseful and feels bad about causing the accident. She keeps rambling as she tries to clean him up with some napkins she snatches from the coffee shop. He refuses her offer to dry clean his shirt and only requests directions to the nearest clothing shop. Even though he doesn't understand her ramblings, he thanks her and sends her on her way to work. Settled at the office and in a meeting with Patricia and her team members, Kate perks up when her boss announces that there will be an addition to the team. She is excited as she waits for her name to be called. Cue her astonishment when Drew from the coffee shop heads into the meeting room. Patricia introduces him as the new addition who will be heading the human interest department. To make matters worse, he is the son of the owner of their newspaper so indirectly, he is the owner of the company. Drew apologizes for coming late due to a stint he had with an ice latte. Drew's first assignment is the human interest story about Olivia Klein. Kate is devastated to hear that her story has been given to Drew just like that. Patricia further breaks her heart when she informs Drew that Kate will give him more details about the story as she brought it up. Kate is annoyed that Patricia only considers her only good enough at giving out details and not writing the main article. At the end of their meeting, she doesn't wait to hear what Drew has to say as she goes after Patricia, eager to have a word with her. Patricia notices that Kate is quiet and inquires from her if everything is okay. With a burst of bravery, Kate indicates her request to write the Olive Klein story since it's her idea, but Patricia scoffs at the idea. She rejects it based on Kate's lack of a degree and experience in writing. But Kate insists that with her knowledge of Sunflower Valley and also Olivia Klein's family, she is in the best position to write the story. The story is a dear one to her as she promises to still carry out her daily errands for Patricia while she works on the story. Patricia decides to allow Kate to travel with Drew to Sunflower Valley but strictly as his research assistant, while Drew writes the story. Disappointed, Kate accepts the offer reluctantly. Even though she doesn't get to write the story, getting to watch Drew write it is a better option than an outright rejection after all. In the next scene, Drew and Kate arrive at Sunflower Valley for research on Olivia Klein. As they wait on the curb, Drew shows how little he knows about Sunflower Valley. Kate's parents, Joe and Linda arrive in their car, and they hit it off with Drew immediately. They offer to drop him off at his hotel, but on second thoughts, they invite Drew to stay in their newly renovated guest house, to show him a bit of Sunflower Valley hospitality. Kate doesn't look too happy with the idea of being in close quarters with Drew, but it seems the universe is against her as Drew takes her parents up on their offer. They arrive at their house, it's a wide open space reminiscent of a typical country home. Kate is reminded of why she always loves coming back home. With the promise of a plate of snacks later, Joe leads Drew to the guesthouse, a stone's throw from the main house where Kate and her folks are staying. Alone with her daughter, Linda gushes about Drew's looks. She doesn't seem to mind having Drew as Kate's boyfriend but Kate shuts down her thoughts from veering towards a relationship. As they make tea, Kate informs her that they are just colleagues. Besides, she doesn't dream of being in a relationship with someone who has her dream job of writing the article, CEO's son or not. Thoughts about the story put Kate in a bad mood and Linda tries to cheer her up. She encourages her to look at it as a learning opportunity. It's a beautiful morning the next day, Drew and Kate are having their first meeting outside a local cafe with the birds tweeting and colorful flowers surrounding them. Drew stares with surprise at the itinerary Kate hands to him. She works better with her activities well outlined and the visit to Sunflower Valley doesn't sound to be different. But, Drew looks choked up breezing through the pages of the itinerary. Working together will not be an easy thing for them as he prefers working at a leisurely pace. Kate gets annoyed when he asks her to tell him about Olivia Klein. Meanwhile, she already gave him a brief containing their interests history. It sure looks like it will be a long day between the two, and it wouldn't end without them butting heads. She gives him a quick rundown of Olivia Klein, who during her time helped dozens of people find love, sort of a matchmaker. Kate looks quite enthused as she gushes about Olivia 
and the journals that detail how she carried out her work with lovers without letting people know. Kate is excited as she talks about Drew interviewing some of the couples Olivia Match made in Sunflower Valley as well as showing him some of the sights in her colorful town. But Drew doesn't share in her excitement. He sounds disappointed about writing a love story meanwhile he had high hopes of writing a human interest story about something more profound and extraordinary. Kate is stunned at how he dismisses love. She is a romantic at heart and finds it difficult to imagine Drew being a cynic. For their first exercise, Kate arranges for a horse-drawn carriage to take them to Olivia's old lake house. Kate shows Drew some of her favorite spots growing up in Sunflower Valley. Drew suggests they have a do-over since they started on a bad foot. He is surprised when Kate informs him that Olivia Klein's story is her idea. He feels sorry that he took over her story. He promises that they will write the best story fit to honor Olive Klein's memory. Kate gives Drew a tour of the empty lake house. She gets emotional talking about Olivia's wedding day on a beautiful summer's day beside the lake. Drew is curious about her love life and asks her if she has anyone waiting for her. She tells him she has no one. Kate leads him to meet their first couple match made by Olivia. Freddie and Betty are an older couple, who are thrilled by the idea of speaking to the newspaper people about their incredible love story. Drew insists Kate leads the interview while he writes the story. Kate is apprehensive about this. She doesn't want to go against Patricia's directive not to be involved in the story but Drew calms her down. Over glasses of Betty's fresh blackberry fizz, the couple recounts their 50-year-old love story of how Olivia took it upon herself to reunite them amidst Freddie's parents' disapproval of their relationship. Their story inspires both Kate and Drew, even though Drew thinks their kind of love is rare. Freddie shows them a glass sunflower, a wedding gift from Olivia which signifies longevity and lifelong happiness. This gift continues to remind them of Olivia long after her death. Surprisingly, their first outing goes smoothly to Kate's surprise. Kate receives a call from Patricia. She complains about her dress not being back from the cleaners. It's obvious she misses Kate's awesome skills and can't wait to have her back in Seattle. Kate promises to make some calls and sort her out. She also informs her of their progress in the story. As they walk home, Drew and Kate argue about love being a result of fate or luck. Drew seems unmoving in his stance against love, he considers himself a pragmatist. Drew is curious about Kate and her plans for the future. He asks her about her plans for the future. Kate talks of being promoted to a junior journalist role, but the stress from working with Patricia doesn't give her enough time to study for her online classes. Drew is sympathetic to her issues at work, and he tells her not to give up. Back home as they set the table for dinner, Linda is happy as she observes an excited Kate recounting her first day experience working with Drew. Kate is surprised when she finds out that her mom invited Drew to dinner. Linda is flummoxed at the idea of sending Drew who she considers her guest off to Giovanni's the local diner. Kate is mindful that he is practically her boss and she doesn't want to cross the lines between them. Drew arrives for dinner with beautiful tulip flowers for Linda. The older woman is impressed by his thoughtfulness. Dinner goes smoothly with lots of laughter and wine flowing easily as they share funny stories. Drew tells them about growing up, being a travel writer for 12 years and finally being involved in his family's business. On his first day in Sunflower Valley, he is impressed especially by the wonderful meal made by Linda. He bides them goodnight and retires for the night. Linda continues to stare after him. It's glaring she is impressed by him but Kate is embarrassed at her mom. It's bright and sunny the next morning. Kate is ready for the day but is surprised that Drew is still undressed. He isn't a fan of following schedules. Kate waits for him. Another surprise awaits Drew when he finds out that they will be cycling to the spot Kate chooses for them to go over some of Olivia's journals. He struggles with riding a bicycle and Kate tells him to loosen up and enjoy the fun experience. They stop when they arrive at an old deserted barn spot that used to be the town's youth center. Kate informs him that she used to volunteer at the barn before it was shut down. Drew listens to Kate speak passionately about the youth center and what it did for some of the kids in the community. She feels bad about shutting down the barn because of a lack of funds and wishes someone would revive it. They arrive at their picnic spot and take turns reading some of Olivia's romantic notes about the couple she match made. Drew doesn't still sound convinced about love and the idea of having soulmates but Kate tells him that it truly exists. He notices Kate scribbling in her notes, curious about it. He asks to read her notes but Kate refuses. She tells him that she writes a lot when she has the time but she doesn't feel too confident allowing him to read it. They visit their next couple, Jennifer and Michael who own a personalized cake-making business. Kate is surprised when Drew introduces her as his co-writer. They both don their aprons to make sunflower cupcakes much to Drew's chagrin. They listen as the couple regales them with the story of how Olivia helped them realize their love for each other over 40 years ago. The story has everyone in their emotions. Kate notices a sunflower just like Freddie and Betty's on their shelf. She and Drew chuckle when the couple confirms that Olivia gave it to them. After the emotional meeting, the duo visits a diner for a late lunch. It seems that Sunflower Valley is growing on Drew as he is impressed by the food. Kate is elated when Drew confesses that Olivia's story no longer seems like an old woman's silly antics to him. The couple's stories seem to have convinced him that she truly cared about people. They are interrupted by Kate's phone. It's Patricia with a task for Kate. Without missing a beat, Kate completes it. 
She is used to her boss. They spend some quality time together learning about each other and on Drew's insistence, they ask each other questions mainly about work. For her final question, Kate asks the big question about why Drew is cynical about love. The question surprises him as he never expected it. He informs her that watching his father wilt away after his mother's death has ignited his resolve never to fall in love. He claims that he never wants to be vulnerable. Kate is sad as she listens to him talk about it. It's obvious that he still hurts from his mother's death. The next morning, Drew finds Kate on a swing writing in her notebook. He approaches her and suggests they take time off from her itinerary. He seems to have had enough of it and wants some spontaneity. They find themselves at Sunflower's Fair. As they walk around the fair, Kate shares memories of her teenage years which she spent at the fair. She is surprised that she enjoys the unplanned activity and feels guilty for shelving her duties for the day. But Drew quickly informs her that living life off track can also lead to amazing things. They sit down somewhere to talk some more. Kate is impressed when Drew informs her that he left his travel writer job to start a non-profit. He admits that his plans changed when his mother got sick and later died. Going off plan became necessary as he shelved his desire to help his father out at their family's newspaper. It's funny to them as they laugh over the fact that working on this project is the least Drew thing to do. But Drew admits that the project is growing on him and he seems to be enjoying it. She fixes a long stare at him, admiring him but Drew breaks it off with his big idea. He sounds excited as he suggests to Kate that they should organize a celebration of Sunflower Valley, Love, and Olivia. This has Kate excited. It surprises her to see that Drew, who started off the project being cynical about love, has finally caught the love bug, even more than her. Her mood changes immediately after she realizes that planning the party means she has to come clean to Drew, and that Olivia is her great-grandmother. Drew notices the change in her demeanor. Kate shuts the idea down and claims that it would be too much work for her to plan. She suggests they head over to their next love story. They arrive at Dean Richard's sunflower farm which looks beautiful and well-maintained. Drew is impressed with it especially as Dean runs it himself since he lost his wife of 44 years, a few years ago. A tall, wiry Dean meets them, and after introductions, he leads them on a guided tour around the farm. He introduces them to one of his farm hands, Tessa and it's obvious that there is some spark between them. As they follow Dean, Kate deadpans when Drew whips out his diary to take some notes of the tour. He has been influenced by her. She teases him that soon enough, he would start preparing itineraries for their trips, but he draws the line there. They take a rest in the shade in the middle of the farm. The reporters listen raptly as Dean tells them about his late Jane and how they met on a train. Dean has a faraway look as he recounts how lost he felt when he lost the paper with Jane's address. But Olivia stepped in and helped him locate his soulmate. The more information Drew and Kate learn about Olivia, the more respect they have for her. It is quite obvious that she went far and beyond to unite people, especially lovers in their town. Dean shows them a photo album of his family, with Olivia also on their wedding day which she graced even though she was sick. He informs them that his daughter who is in New York was named Olivia, obviously after Olivia Klein. It's an emotional moment between the trio. This is news to Kate as she had no idea that her great-grandmother had been honored so greatly by Dean's wonderful family. Drew is curious and decides to ask the burning question on his mind that keeps him from falling in love. He asks Dean if he would ever fall in love again. Dean tells him that although no one could replace his Jane, he is open to being loved again. It's such profound advice, one Drew is willing to take. As they find their way out of the farm, they take a minute to soak in all they have learned about Olivia so far. They have come to the end of their interviews and Kate asks Drew how the writing is coming along. According to him, things are moving fine. Drew seems a bit off. Kate notices it and asks him about it but he waves her concern off and asks to be left alone as he takes a stroll on his own. This leaves Kate worried about him. Back at the house, her worry doesn't ease off as Drew misses dinner. She apologizes to Linda for not coming home as often as she wants. Sunflower Valley is much more than home to her, as she finds satisfaction in the small town. Kate decides to take a ride, but Linda knows it's just an excuse for her to go look for Drew. Kate smiles at her mom, it's clear that she has been caught but she claims she wants to make sure that he is okay, manners and all. She finds him sitting by the lake alone. Drew claims he has a lot to think about and is crushed to have missed Linda's world-famous beef stew. Drew confesses that their meeting with Dean reminded him of his father. The Olivia effect has also gotten to him as he thinks differently about love especially after he listened to a positive Dean even after losing his wife. He is hopeful that his dad will find a special someone just the same way Dean did. He admits that closing himself off from love has been meaningless. Olivia's story has made him understand that love in itself is worth the risk. Kate agrees with him. For her, she has learned three things from their foray into Olivia's story. She is ready to write, to fall in love, and that there is no Olivia to help her accomplish her dreams. As they stare into each other's eyes, their private moment is interrupted by a buzz from Kate's phone. What a buzzkill. They are both embarrassed about what almost happened. Luckily, it's Linda checking up on them. With the promise of Linda's leftover beef stew, they return to the house. Drew finds Joe splitting wood and decides to help him out. 
As they talk, Drew is surprised that Joe has a fair knowledge of Olivia. Hugh is surprised when he finds out from him that Olivia is indeed Kate's great-grandmother. He wonders why Kate never cared to mention it to him. Little wonder she had so much interest in the story. The next morning he finds Kate enjoying the quiet of Sunflower Valley. He shares with her that he received a call from Patricia that the story needs to be published the next morning. He claims that with his coffee by his side, the article will be ready to be sent out soon. He confronts Kate about his discussion with Joe the previous night. She apologizes to him for hiding that information away from him. Drew accepts her apology, obviously not mad at her. He observes her talk passionately about Olivia. It dawns on him that she should be the one writing the article and not him. He shares this idea with Kate and even promises to guide her through the writing but she disagrees. She is adamant about not going against Patricia's rules even though it means that she is stuck doing her kids' projects instead of writing in the newspaper. What a bad time for Kate to stick to a plan. Drew accepts her decision reluctantly and reminds her that he is always willing to help her build her portfolio. To evade the discussion, Kate suggests that he talks to his dad when he returns to Seattle about the capacity he wants to run the company. He agrees with her suggestion. She leaves him to make another pot of coffee and also gets some more brownies for Drew while he digs into work. The morning goes by with the two of them hard at work. Finally, when their work is all done and the article is ready to be submitted, Kate agrees to start plans on the Sunflower Festival idea that he pitched to her earlier. Drew is excited at her change of mind. They make plans to start preparations the next day while she decides to retire for the night. As she leaves with her notes, some of them fall off without her notice and Drew picks them up. It is her article about Olivia's story. He is in awe of her writing which looks way better than anything he could ever write. He decides then to submit hers to the publishers instead of his own. Kate is excited the next morning as she makes breakfast. She is excited to finally see Olivia's article published in the papers even if she isn't the writer. She is unaware of what awaits her as she drags Drew along to the newspaper box for a copy. Her excited face turns sour when she reads through the news and finds her article staring back at her. Confused, she confronts Drew about it. He confesses to submitting her draft to the publishers. He claims her article had the personal touch Olivia's story needed because it came from her heart. Kate on the other hand is devastated, thoughts of Patricia's threat to fire her if she involves herself in the article cross her mind but Drew is insistent that Patricia doesn't have the right to fire her without just cause. Kate is adamant about not wanting Drew to do her any favors. She is hurt that he decided for her without her consent even though he knows that she wouldn't dream of doing the same to him. She wishes him the best of luck as she informs him that a flight will be leaving Sunflower Valley for Seattle that same day. As she leaves, her phone rings and it's Patricia. Kate prepares for the worst but she is surprised when Patricia answers the call with praises to her for the piece. She describes it as one of the greatest pieces she has read all through her time at the newspaper. This warms Kate's heart, she is relieved that Patricia likes the article, even though she has no idea of her fate at work. In the next scene, while Kate watches Linda water the garden, she confesses that she feels awful for how she treated Drew even though he put her career at risk. Linda encourages her to look up to the positive side of things even if it includes being unemployed. Drew returns to Seattle and decides to take Kate's advice of following his dreams and not that of his father. Inspired by Kate, he returns to Sunflower Valley with his father, Mr. Hutton, and takes him to the deserted youth center. He admits to his father that he does not want to take over their family's business. His father is surprised that he took him from Seattle just to share that information with him. He informs Drew that he never expected him to do anything against his will. Drew shares with him the dream he has always had of starting a non-profit. He seeks his father's blessings to start renovations and running the old barn in Sunflower Valley. Mr. Hutton of course offers his blessings to Drew. He is proud of his son's initiative. The two men share a man hug with Drew having the biggest smile on his face. His dad is curious to know why he plans to settle down in Sunflower Valley out of all places. Drew is evasive but his dad suspects that it's because of a girl and he asks to meet her. Drew throws a party just like he planned with Kate in honor of Olivia and the couple she brought together. Kate is unaware of what's been planned. Drew plans with her parents to bring her to the lake house where the party is being held. She is surprised at the crowd of people she meets including Mr. Hutton. She is apprehensive when she sees him and thinks he is in Sunflower Valley to fire her. He calms her down when he offers her a new job. The newspaper has been receiving lots of calls regarding the article, and asking for more stories. Kate is excited about this, especially at the offer to make the love stories of Sunflower Valley a monthly affair. Dumbstruck, she accepts the offer. When Drew comes up to speak with her, Linda leads the crowd away from the duo to give them some privacy. Kate is happy to see Drew back in Sunflower Valley. She apologizes to him for the harsh words she said to him the last time they were together, but he waves it off as nothing. As they stare into each other's eyes, Drew admits that he has fallen in love with her. Kate also admits the same. He hands her a gift, and she is overwhelmed with emotions when she opens the box and finds a necklace with a sunflower pendant. With the promise to start writing their own love story, since Olivia isn't there to do it for them, they share a private moment